Hello and welcome to this short video. In today's video, I'm going to show you Train Simulator 2021 running in VR using a third party application called Vorpex. Vorpex is a great program that basically injects VR compatibility into older games that don't natively support it. Now, obviously being third party, it's not without its glitches and problems, and even to get to this point took a lot of tinkering. What Vorpex is doing here quite cleverly is using the built-in Track IR support and mapping that onto a VR tracked headset one-to-one. -one. So as I look around the cab, instead of doing what Track IR normally does, which is take a slight head movement and exaggerate it so you can look around, this is doing it one-to-one. -one. Now, it's not perfect, and in some circumstances, it can be a little bit nausea inducing but it is better than nothing and what you can do with this cab the flexibility and the movement that it gives you is amazing and actually shows that there is a real need for a fully supported vr train sim now we've got games like derail valley which have native vr support but the game isn't a simulator the steam train in Derail Valley is so far from realistic that it really put me off. There are some mods you can download to make it better, but you can't really reskin a game that is not designed to be a sim. Now in this first clip, I'm driving an old British slam door train. These electrical multiple units were what was on the network when I was growing up as a kid in the early 90s. Now, Vorpex, at least in the settings I've managed to get it working in, doesn't give you that depth of field, uh, the feeling that objects are really near or really far, that 3D effect that you're used to seeing in movies, for example. But what it does have is the head tracking, and mapped with the fact that things are closer or further away from you in your head movement, you still do get a sense of depth. I can actually feel how cramped this cab is. It's very difficult to describe in words, but I assure you it's worth the time and the effort, even if you only try it a couple of times. Now, there are a few issues with the way things work in Vorpex. For example, I am unable to see the HUD. I know it's there at the bottom of the screen, but I can't see it. It's simply not in my field of view. I also don't have hand controls, so I'm using an Xbox controller, which, again, a lot of the menus that pop up using that controller, I can't see. Another issue is if you lean outside of the cab or move outside of the cab's interior, you start to realise that large parts of the train are missing. Bizarrely, this isn't as much of an issue on steam locomotives, which we'll look at in a minute, because they're open cab, and so the developer was unable to just leave things unrendered. Right, now we're in this class 31 that I've set up to be hauling freight. And again, it looks pretty good. Uh, the sounds are great. They're 3D tracked, so I can hear the audio coming from behind me. I know where the engine is. Again, the only problem that you have is that you don't have that stereoscopic view, the left eye, right eye, giving you slightly different images. As far as the headset's concerned, it's a flat image. But your brain does compensate. Because of the way you move your head naturally, and the fact that things move in and out of view as other parts of the cab get in the way, you get that sense of 3D all in your head. Again, not as good as a natively supported app, but very good for what a third party piece of software is able to manage. Now, one thing I am starting to notice is that the scale is ever so slightly off. 
things feel just a little bit too small in here and that may be due to the fact that the app is guessing what the scale should be in the settings in the train simulator i've got my field of view set to the maximum that it will go and i believe that vorpix suggests a field of view of about 90 to 110 degrees field of view again it's not a major problem it's still far more enjoyable in 3d than it is in 2d one thing that is very immersive in VR is the fact that because I can't see the HUD because it's below my field of vision in the headset, I'm having to actually look down at my controls to confirm what power notch I mean. I need to look down and actually check the speedometer. I need to keep my eyes on the track to look for speed signs and I need to keep my eyes looking out for signals something which is a lot easier in the older routes where semaphores are used as I'm colorblind and uh, distant light signals are not my friend in this game there really is so much potential here as far as VR goes now I believe TSW is the main focus of Dovetail Games now and I very much doubt that they're going to go back to Train Simulator other than to update the year at the end of the name. That seems to have been their general practice over the last few years. They are still releasing third party DLC, but the core engine hasn't been changed since it was moved over to 64 bit a couple of years back. What I would love to see is a third party modder come in and be able to retroactively add uh, VR support in a similar vein to how Fly Inside did with X-Plane and Flight Simulator X back when the VR headsets first came out. For those who aren't familiar, Fly Inside was a small company of I believe only one, maybe two people who were able to get the old flight simulators way before there was any official support for VR they were able to get them into VR and it worked perfectly. It was so far ahead of what anybody else had. It wasn't until much later that X-Plane added VR support natively into the program. And of course we had to wait until 2020 for native VR to come to the modern Flight Simulator 2020. Now unfortunately, Vorpex doesn't have much of a chance working in TSW. Part of the problem is that the field of view in TSW is locked and it's locked in at a very narrow angle. I have tried Vorpex on it and it was vomit inducing. You're very zoomed in and you feel drunk. It's not a pleasant experience. Now, people have been calling for a field of view slider in TSW for a long time. Regardless of VR, it's just nice to have that wider field of view. Now, Dovetail have stated that part of the reason they haven't added a slider is down to performance issues. The problem with that explanation is that this is a PC game. I don't know any simulators on the market that do not offer a field of view adjustment. Even first person competitive online shooters have a field of view adjustment. Aside from the field of view issue, the other problem is that currently TSW does not have track IR support as of April 2021. It was on the list of things to be done, but in a recent live stream they stated that it had been made no longer a priority and was removed from their roadmap. So let's look at some steam locomotive and this is what I was really excited for. Currently, Train Simulator 2021 is still the best simulator for steam locomotives on the market. Until steam is released on TSW, which is expected to be mid to end of 2021, 
it's the main reason I still go back to this program. Now driving a steam locomotive really lends itself to VR. Drivers would often lean out of the cab, out of the side. You don't really have uh, a lot of field of view looking out that tiny front window. So drivers will often sit with their back against the side of the train and then they can lean back and look down the length of the train or look ahead of where they're going. Now there are a couple of bugs here again. I'm not sure if this is due to Vorpex or whether it's just an inherent train simulator bug. But for some reason, despite the fact I can't actually see the HUD, I have to have the full HUD open at times where I want to add to the firebox or turn on the injectors to, to fill up the boiler. For some reason I can't do this even with the shortcuts on my controller without the full HUD being on. Driving this steam locomotive is probably the best business case for having VR in a train simulator. Driving steam engines is so much more complicated than driving DMUs, EMUs, anything else is, is pretty simple to drive. But in a steam engine, I have to keep looking over to the water glass. I have to check what the boiler pressure is doing. I need to be able to check what my brakes are at. And as I said before, I would need to be able to lean out of the cab to see where I'm going properly. To really show you how effective and how immersive the VR is, it genuinely feels uncomfortable when I'm leaning out of the cab and suddenly see a train coming the other way. A couple of times I felt myself suddenly duck back into the cab for fear of having my head taken off by a steam locomotive going the other way. This also gives me a great appreciation for the drivers that drove these things back in the day. Most steam engines back in Britain at the time didn't have speedometers. They had to guesstimate how fast they were going. So when I'm going along and I can't see the HUD, I know roughly what the speed limit is along here, but I don't know whether I'm doing it or not. And that makes the game a lot harder, especially if you're playing for points. But that's not really the point here. I'm not playing in VR to get a maximum score. I'm playing in VR because it's so immersive. I genuinely feel like I'm stood on this footplate on this train. It is incredible. Now there are, again, a few issues. If I lean too far out the cab, I can see that the wheels are missing, but it doesn't happen very often. And most of the time, driving a steam locomotive, my attention is fixed on the inside of the cab and out of that tiny port of a window. I'm having to look for semaphore signals and whistle boards as I go along. I don't have a HUD to warn me. It really does pull you in. So one thing that has been left with me after this experience is a hope that at some point TSW may natively support VR in the future. Currently, the engine that the game uses does have native VR support, although it would take Dovetail Games to actually implement that correctly. Until very recently, I would have suggested that was an impossibility. Dovetail Games are not quick to jump on new ideas and requested features. They're often quite slow to move along and they're not great at fixing issues that already exist in the game. But recently, Sony confirmed that they are going to continue to support VR on the PlayStation 5 with the announcement of new hand controllers and the confirmation that a new headset is coming. Currently, there is no native PlayStation 5 TSW but there is the PS4 version, and there is the ability to update TSW to a PS5 version. Perhaps the push of VR by Sony might just be enough to push Dovetail into implementing VR in a good way. Wishful thinking maybe? Probably. 
I still think the chances of it happening are slim, but you never know. I suppose it really does depend how much pressure they're under to implement it. So, you've been watching me play Train Simulator 2021 using Vorpex, which I will link in the description below. I highly suggest it if you've got a VR headset and enjoy playing simulators, especially if you enjoy train simulators. It's not perfect and it is buggy, but it is worth it. When I first did this, I thought I wouldn't come back to it again. I played it, I sort of dismissed it thinking, yeah, it's not great though, but I kept bugging me. I kept wanting to have another go in VR and I've come back and I've played it for a few hours now. I started a scenario in game and ended up finishing the whole scenario in VR. It's genuinely compelling to feel like you are on the footplate of a train or in the cab of an EMU. So if you liked the video, please leave a like. Feel free to subscribe. I often do different videos in VR. I've done a few train videos. I've got a model railway I made during lockdown this year. And share the video if you think it was interesting. I'm sure if there's enough noise about it, perhaps people will hear about it at Dovetail Games. You never know what could happen. So until next time, I'll see you later.